Hey guys, welcome back, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, be sure to go check out all that IWC, RWA, all that stuff, DVDs, digital downloads, uh, flash sales, if you follow Sorgatron Media on Twitter, and all of it's at sorgatronmedia.com slash store, uh, so you can see the complete collection of what we have, including Mont- Montreal Theory. Uh, still plenty of people getting into that, and, uh, and let us know their theory over at montrealtheory.com. Uh, and so now is the time where we like to remember when. Hmm... And I'm gonna remember when and it's gonna happen again and again And I'm gonna sing a song Until we cycle around all the faces and back to Sorg Thank you, and uh, I, this week, of course, uh, there was this news And I don't know, maybe we'll talk a little more at length later about it uh, About what exactly happened But JR, no longer a part of WWE, uh, we do know uh, and, you know, I thought it's a good time for us to talk, you know, think back to JR. What were your <laughs> favorite, what? No, no. Uh, what were your favorite JR, Jim Ross moments, uh, over the years? Um, you know, considering he's now done with the company. Hopefully he doesn't go to TNA, you know. Uh, or maybe he does, and maybe he makes them more important. Who knows? Uh, so let's go around. In uh, LB, do you have a JR moment? Well, uh, I... <clears throat> uh, it's so hard. There's there's so many different ones. If you want to go for a silly JR moment, which there wasn't, I mean, the, the silly JR moments weren't great. But one of them that was great was the Skittles commercials. They would have him do the Skittles commercials, and he would freak the fuck out. He'd be like, Ferdy, 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 goddammit, Ferdy Skittles! And it was awesome. <clears throat> Uh, a more serious thing. I, 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 this isn't. I guess this isn't like a specific time. It's just an example of how great he was. Uh, Jr. More than any broadcaster since knew when to be quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, he knew when silence would add to this to the seriousness of a of an event, and he knew when he had to talk. Um, and uh, he, like Mike, what they do it now. They still do it now. They get quiet when things are supposed to be serious. But Jr. When he did it, it added a weight that uh, that I think um, is is very hard to replicate. I'm kind of with you. I, I I don't have a lot of unfortunately like the specific stuff or instances where Jr. is not being shown in a great light. Because anytime he was brought into the ring, he or or something else or an interview, he was caught on fire by like by, by Kane, like wheels is saying in the chat room. Um, or, you know, joining the Kiss My Ass Club, you know, especially. Uh, you know, I mean, there was a lot of bad stuff that happened as far as that. But he was a guy that was always there. You know what I mean? And he always just made things feel more important. Right. Even though I like I know there was mm-hmm. a time when we were like, you know, hey, Jr. and Lawler it feels like they're a little long in the tooth. Then we lost them both for a little bit. And we're like, man, I wish we had Jr. back again. Right. Um, yeah. He just oh, yeah. he does. He, he, like you're saying, he just brings that weight to these matches. He, the stories, the, you know, you know, going back and saying, you know, this man, this man is fighting with everything. He's got. Could you imagine? I get I'm getting chills right now even thinking about it. What if we had Jr. announcing the damn. Daniel Bryan, Jim, uh, John Cena match this mm. past SummerSlam. I mean, as it is, he did step in. It was this past WrestleMania he had stepped in to do a couple of calls, or maybe I'm I thinking believe the so. he did the, uh, was, the Undertaker match, and you know that match felt more mm. because of it, right? Um, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, the, you know, nothing taken away from you. Got the two probably best guys in the company working in there with CM Punk and Undertaker uh, in, in, a, in a dream match, I think, on anybody's account. Uh, but, you know, just him just making it that much better. Um, so, I mean, do you guys have, Eamon a, a, a or Riz, do you have anything more specific, or is it more kind of the general idea one. like me? What about you? Yeah, Riz? Well, I have, actually have kind of what you guys were going on, but I also have one that's kind of striking me as not really... A JR, it was a, it's a JR moment, but it was weird. A JR moment, but the first one I want to say is when you guys were talking. I remember he was the only one who who brought out emotion, raw emotion, like the silence that uh, LB was talking about. Mm-hmm. And I remember him uh, free, on some of the matches that were really really hard to watch. <clears throat> he brought out, he started he. 
he even went up to as far as swearing on live TV almost. Mm-hmm. Like, you think he called uh, Stephanie a bitch one time or something along those lines, uh, or like saying this sucks or something. But he brought out that, emo- that raw emotion that that wrestling needed. Um, but also, I remember uh, my first real memories of JR were of, let me see here, were of when he was heel for about a month. Oh. And he brought out, you know, fake, he brought out like fake, uh, who was it, Razor and fake Diesel. Diesel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he just shot on everybody in the WWE, WEF at that time. And I remember that because he brought out his own announce table. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was brilliant, and I wish they would have kept it. But <clears throat> just there it was awesome. It was my f- pretty much my one of the first times I've actually seen JR show the emotion. But it was that time when the emotion was needed. Yeah. Because yeah. I think this was his first battle with Bell's palsy. Uh, yeah, and I love you know I when I came back in in the speaking in at WWE, and I remember this time when you know he would come in and say, "You don't, you're not using me because you don't like the way I look because I had this problem," you know, which was you know him being heelish, but him being truthful you know what i mean um it it was it was definitely odd but you know it really kind of hit home you know because it's like it's not like it's something he did that he has this problem and and who cares what he looks like he's still the greatest voice in the business you know at the time um so i i don't know it's and i'm glad he didn't do it too much after that you know the Mm. uh, because they got him to like settle in and be the guy that tells stories instead of being the story. And I think that's where he shined the most, you know, um, you know, I got, I got to mention the, um, one big thing that kind of stuck out for me was, I think it was Paul Heyman talking on that WWE 2K 14 panel about, Mm -hmm. Uh, he's like, well, you know, yeah, okay. I, I, I taught, you know, Joey Styles, everything he knows to, you know, do ECW and announce there. But to be honest, all I was repeating were the things that Jim Ross said to me, you know, and there's a bit more of a story there about how like Paul Heyman pretty much ran out every announcer before Jim Ross came in and laid down the line, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. So, I, and that's, that's, that, and that's pretty cool. I, and, and that he's that good, you know, well, you, I mean, especially you as a budding announcer in the wrestling business, I was going to say, um, I, have a, I have a funny one and I have a serious one. Um, my funny one was I was at a live uh, Raw in Corpus once where Vince McMahon uh, brought, I think, Jerry, uh, Coach, and Jay Arnold to the ring because they were the announced team. And I forgot why, but like he was going to fire one of them. And it came down to JR and Stephanie was there and she was a bad, you know, you know bitch Stephanie, you know. Yeah, and Linda McMahon comes out and like, oh, okay, Linda McMahon's going to save the day because Linda McMahon's pretty much always been a face. Uh, and then she tells Jr. he's fired and kicks him in the nuts, and the McMahons dance over Jr.'s like dead body, and it was awkward. <laughs> it's so messed up. Like, it was like a- TKOs was a good one. The Twisty Rockets from Crush Hour. Yes. <laughs> It's always that's always a good memory. Kane um, has the twisty rockets. Um, my serious one, uh, and it's not this. Uh, obviously, it's not memory because I wasn't watching wrestling at this time. But uh, I, when I was studying stuff for commentary, uh, one of the matches I looked at was Bret Hart versus Sean, uh, Steve Austin from WrestleMania 13 in the submission match. Mm-hmm. And Jr. is golden in that match. Uh, that a lot of people call that like the breakout for Jr. Uh, because he was always sort of just there. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was really his chance to sort of break out, and he ate so much of that match. He, it's, it's watching that. If 
the match would have been spectacular no matter what, but the aiding of that commentary to sort of guide the viewer along, I think helps it a lot. Yeah. Um, and it makes it one of the best matches of all time. So I, that's one of my personal favorites. Awesome. Awesome. So please say, ooh, ooh, I remember another oh, one. Oh, okay. Uh, the, uh, the, the Greek WrestleMania. <laughs> oh, that was his debut. That was, that was my first exposure to Jr. As yeah, I, and like you, I I didn't watch WCW, so I had no idea who this guy was. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was Roman, but I, think I get your point. You know, did and when he yeah, when, when he turned heel, didn't he like complain about like I debuted this coming company in a damn toga? How you know? It, mm-hmm. it, like that was part of his spiel. You know, when he went mm-hmm. under like that. Uh, so that's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, guys, if you have a JR moment, please let us know. Hashtag remember one. Uh, hit us at Mayhem Show on Twitter, of course. Um, and please also, uh, you know, uh, uh, hashtag WMS387 uh, uh, for this episode and everything. And join us there on the Facebook group, and you can continue uh, talking with us about this and other topics as well.